Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. You are worthy, God. We magnify your holy name. Father, we ask you to take control of this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we command everything, every obstacle to leave in Jesus' name. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we just encountered some technical difficulty. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, those of you who are t tuning in for the first time, good evening to you and God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, as I was saying earlier, for those of you who probably heard me or did not or just tuning in, um, on my left is our friend and minister in the faith, um, Kara Jarrell. Um, she's a wonderful woman of God. I'm just going to let her say hi to everyone. Good evening, Facebook family. Good evening. It's an honor to be here. Amen. Praise God. She is our new adopted um, friend to praise Tabernacle. <laughs> um, she's known Apostle Joshua for a while, so um, she's not new to um, um, friendships at um, praise Tabernacle. So um, on Sunday, as I said earlier, we were um, talking, I was preaching rather on defeating the obstacles of our purpose. And um, a lot of people hear this subject and they're like, Joel, what are you talking about? What obstacles of my purpose are you talking about? Well, this is a very um, general um, subject. We know that we all face trials and problems and things in this life that serves as an obstacle. Rather, they're all obstacles. Anything you face in life as a problem, as a trial, um, as a, a, a tragedy or whatever, it's an obstacle in your purpose. Um, and there are things that come into your life as a result of, of um, ignorance, um, as a result of Satan trying to delay you from the promises of God or the work of God in your life, or as a result of you willingly um, diverting from the will of God or a relationship with God and allowing other things to detract you and grab your attention. So in, in that manner, you're, you're creating an obstacle for yourself. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that and talk about how we, we could defeat those obstacles. And for those of you who think that it's not possible, I got news for you, good news, that it is possible. Paul said that I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And um, our foundational scripture this evening will be taken from John 16, 33. Um, I'm reading from the King James Version, and it, it reads, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, or be of good courage. I have overcome the world. In that one statement, in that passage of Scripture, Jesus said so much that sums up everything in our life. Jesus is not um, getting away from the subject of um, tribulation and trial. He's not saying at all that uh, because I have come and I have redeemed you from the curse of sin and I died on the cross for you and now you're born again. No more trials. Trials are over. No, that's not it at all. You know, Jesus came to redeem our souls and save our spirit. But as long as we remain in this body, we will go through problems. We will go through trials. There will be temptation. As a matter of fact, he told his disciples, pray that you do not fall into temptation. Temptation will come. And for some people, um, it's a nest. Obstacles are necessary in your life to help you grow. Do you agree, um, Kara? Absolutely. Um, with that statement, I wanted to go back to where you mentioned uh, the, the obstacles within our purpose. 
And I am one that is big on definition. Doesn't matter how simplistic the word is. So (laughs) while you were there, I just defined the word purpose. And all it means according to uh, the online dictionary is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So God created all of us with a purpose. Everyone has purpose in their life. But like you stated, it does not mean that our purpose is going to be easily attainable. And so it is important for us to, as believers, to have that mindset that I have purpose, but also expect challenges, obstacles, and tribulations to come. So the scripture that we read is important because he was letting his disciples know, fear not. I've already overcome everything that you're going to face. It doesn't dismiss the fact that you're not going to go through it because life is going, we're going to experience life. But I have given you the power to overcome it. If you think about an athlete um, or or someone, we were talking about obstacles. I was thinking about like an obstacle course. I remember when I was young, I used to watch uh, Double Dare. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm giving my age. I'm not ashamed. I'm 40. So I used to watch Double Dare, and the families would come on, and they had, like, this intense obstacle course. And if you, of course, uh, pass the obstacle course, you won a grand prize. Yeah. And so um, prior to that, it was, it was important to uh, some people, when they do obstacle courses for some type of athletic purposes, they train for that. Right? They train for that course. They build their stamina. They build their uh, uh, weight or whatever it is. So us eating the word of God, us exercising our faith right now trains us and prepares us for that challenge to be able to navigate through those obstacle courses in life. And what is that that drives us is our purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, then you're going to fail every obstacle that comes your way. Man, you're so right. One of the um, the headings I have here is what you what you believe about God shapes the framework of your theology, and you know the way you see God says everything about who you are, about your relationship. Because we know that theology is the study of God. The way you view God, your perspective of God, your perspective of God as a father, um, as as um, a healer as uh, the creator, um, um, as uh, your sustainer, your provider. Um, There are several instances in the Bible where the prophets, they refer to God as different things, um, um, different things in the moment. That, Like Abraham, for example, Abraham um, referred to God as Jehovah Jireh, which is my provider. In context, in that particular situation that Abraham was in, God provided for him. So as a result of that provision, he referred to Jehovah as Jireh. And, 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 and God honored that. In that moment, God honored that. Um, so your, 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 your thoughts, your, um, your belief system has a lot to do with how you overcome issues, how you defeat issues. Because if you fail to read about what God says about a particular thing that you're going through in life, or even your relationship, just consistently studying your Bible and understanding the things that God has said about who He is first, His Son Jesus Christ, what He did for us, and wh- who you are in Christ Jesus. If you fail to really study and know and create a framework for yourself of, of all those things, you won't understand who you are in Christ. You won't understand what the scripture says about the situations that you may, you may be facing. This statement that Jesus gave in, in um, John chapter 16, 33, this was a past statement. With fu- futuristic um, um, rewards. And, and remember, Jesus has already ascended and seated at the right hand of God. And the Bible said that we are seated in heavenly places, not with or beside, but 
in Christ Jesus. We are in him. As Jesus is in heaven, we are in him. And some of you may be saying, well, Joel, you make this sound so easy. You make it sound like this is a, a cakewalk. This is a, the, a walk in the park. You make it sound like, oh, you, you had obstacles and, you know, you just immediately instantly believed. And, and, and um, you know, it just went away. Babe, you want to share a little bit about that? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, just to build on what you both have shared, you know, we just want to um, release some good news. And the good news is that everything that God has created has a purpose. Mm -hmm. We are on this earth with a purpose, you know, so there's nobody that could say, well, I don't have a purpose. Yes, you have. Because when we read in the Bible that everything that God created, when we read it in the book of Genesis, we read that everything that God created had a purpose. And God said, oh, this is good. <laughs> you know, so it is good that you are on earth. It is good that you are alive today. These times that we are living on right now, these are challenging times, but it's also an opportunity. And, and that's what I like to see that challenge it's an opportunity, you know, because when is a challenge an opportunity? When we know who we are, when we know whose we are, right? When we know that God is our creator, that God, you know, created us with a purpose, then, you know, we see a challenge like this is an opportunity. You will ask, like, what type of opportunity? Well, it's, it's an opportunity to see God in a different light. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to grow in our faith. It's an opportunity to grow in our relationship and dependency, you know, with of uh, God. It's, it's, it's an opportunity to see miracles. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to um, minister to somebody, mm -hmm. you know. So I like the challenge. Actually, as a testimony, I, I will say my husband challenged me to to be mm -hmm. here and I said I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it I'm so nervous you know this is not my maybe comfort zone and uh, but I like a challenge mm -hmm. you know to be honest because I believe that um, when you say yes especially when you say yes to God um, he will take you to different places right so to me um, accepting this challenge will require <laughs> a lot of faith <laughs> but I say hey I, you know, I will do it. I will do it because, yes, you know, I have some good news to share. Mm -hmm. And like I said, these times that we're living here right now, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to encourage you. It's an opportunity to build your, your, uh, your faith, you know, that God is in control, that God places us on this earth at this time. And, and this is a, an opportunity, as we were talking earlier, you know, that God has spared a remnant. Mm -hmm. And, and the, we are that remnant. And um, what is a remnant? A remnant is a residue. You know, those that are believing God, those that are believing that the church, yes, will rise up. The, that we are, you know, on, on we are, um, how can I say it, so close to see, you know, a, a, a great outpouring Sometimes, like I was sharing with my with my sister here, uh, Sister Kara. Sometimes we we talk about um, about um, revival, mm -hmm. and we we think is revival will just come, you know, as we see it, and we are loving on each other, we just, you know, doing church and, and just living our, our daily lives. But these times that we're living right now. Revival is coming. This is just a, a, an awakening. This is just for us to have per perspective and also um, to to be aware. I like this song that says, um, "Let us what is it? Let us um, let us pray that God will give us more. Let, let us become more aware of Your presence." I like that song. Let us become more aware of Your presence, and that's my prayer, Lord. Let us become more aware of what you are doing you know that um we are experiencing so so many things on earth right now we have uh so much turmoil you know in, in in every area in social um political turmoil and there's so much confusion confusion and despair and, and challenges you know but we have to like jesus said be of good courage you know so we are overcomers, and that's the good news that we want to share with each one of you. Amen. Praise God. Thanks, babe. So, Joe, I'm sorry. Can I add to that? Yeah, sure. What you're saying? 
I was just sitting here thinking, um, if what is victory if there aren't any challenges? Yeah, <laughs> and so victory is, is important. We want the victory in every aspect and areas of our life, right? And so um, we, and, and we expect that God is gonna give us the victory. But with victory comes challenge. Anytime you win some sort of prize that meant that you had some sort of obstacle or challenge yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And so it's important and challenges causes us to appreciate the moment yeah. and God. And it gives us, it, 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 it actually shows us another reflection of him, like you were speaking of, um, I believe one of the uh, patriarchs knowing him as Jehovah Jireh, forgive me because yeah, his Abraham. name is, yes, yeah. and I should know that. <laughs> but um, Jehovah Jireh, it, but it, it showed him that God was his provider at Amen. that moment. Amen. He had a challenge and God revealed himself as provider at that moment. And so I, I, I just, and, and it's easier said than done when you yeah. find yourself in a trial, yeah. you know, when you're losing loved ones or, you know, seasons of afflictions or divorce or loss of job or whatever the situation may be. But at the end of it, as believers, stirring our faith, framing our world, yeah knowing that there is a victory at the end. Amen. Amen. And uh, a statement I made earlier, um, and on also on Sunday I made that statement, um, if you have a wrong interpretation of the Bible, um, you know, your perspective of God will be wrong. And if your perspective of, of Scripture is wrong, your understanding will be wrong. And if your understanding is wrong, then your application of Scripture will be wrong. And if your application is wrong, then the results will be wrong. And, you know, some people are too lazy sometimes to really, um, you know, study the Word of God and to understand who God is for themselves. Um, um, they like to rely on others. They like to rely on hearsay. They like to rely on um other people's testimony, but other people's testimony will not make you overcome your problem. You have to actually face your problem head on. Um, one of the statements here, and I'm going to turn it over to Kiara. She's going to expound on it a little bit. Um, what you believe about yourself determines how you behave and respond to life. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um I want to answer that with uh, this scripture here. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 3, and we were talking about framing our world. Yeah. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, Amen. so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. And I was sitting there as you were speaking, meditating on that uh, scripture, the importance of us framing our world our individual world, who we are, our purpose through the word of God. And so if we frame our world, my, my space with God word, with the word of God, it would dictate my response and my actions. Amen. Not saying that I won't have shortcomings yeah. or moments that aren't perfect. I wrote down today, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It's not about making the mistake more it, it's not about making a mistake because we're all going to make mistakes yeah. the issue is is when you live in that mistake and so understanding that so if i'm framing my word my world through his word and what he says about me because when people are responding you know just just um and you know in their flesh emotionally and and and, and when it's habitual in their life they don't have an understanding of who they are or who God has created them to be. It's beyond, because, uh, you know, we're dealing with a generation where, you know, don't judge me. <laughs> that No judgment zone. Don't judge me. Don't judge my actions. Don't yeah. judge my God dress or how I look. God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah, and he knows your actions, too. And with your actions come consequences. Yeah. And so if I strive in framing my word world, excuse me, every morning by speaking the word of God, pacing myself every morning or every day or throughout the day, declaring God's word over my life for my purpose, over my family, I begin to frame, just like a, a picture frame, I begin to frame that and I begin to respond off of what I speak into existence. Yeah. And so sometimes we live in negative environments 
because of what we've created is spoken out of our mouth, negative things. And then now my behavior reflects on what's inside of me, which is negativity. So the the word of God trumps all that. And it's all about discipline. It is faith, activating faith, connecting with people with faith, like-minded faith. And, um, and I believe with that, that'll assist with how we respond to things in life. Amen. Amen. That it's so important how we respond to issues and problems determine, you know, the, the outcome of, of, of everything. And it's very important that we respond to problems with the mind of Christ. Paul said, let this mind that is in Christ also be in you. Um, uh, we have a responsibility, you know. And, uh, and Paul also said an athlete, when he's running a race, his intention is not to play second. You know, he, every athlete, it doesn't matter how trained that athlete is. It doesn't matter if that athlete, specific athlete, is running against or competing against better athletes who he knows have a record of gold medals. You know, there were a lot of guys competing against um, Usain Bolt, as we know, one of the most popular, Asafa Powell. There were guys competing against them with the intention, this is my time. This is my year. You know, especially when Usain Bolt and, uh, was getting older in age, you know, the younger guys were coming in and they're like, oh, no, he's older now. He's, he, he's probably, you know, um, um, a little bit uh, or probably less um, faster. And, and they're, they're like, you have trained for this. I don't care if I'm going against the fastest man in the world. You're only the fastest man in the world until somebody faster yeah. passes yeah. you. Yeah. You know, let's take um, when we had the, um, the Olympics and, and um, I believe it was um, Michael Phelps. And it was this, the, uh, I think it was this young Asian um, 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 kid. And actually Michael Phelps was his like mentor. He was like, he looked, uh, his hero. He looked up to Michael Phelps. And one, you know, it only took one situation where they were swimming and Michael Phelps just literally saw or probably heard under the water something moving in the water that was faster than him. And, you know, after he rose up from that water, he he saw the kid standing above him and, and, and he realized in that moment that he was no longer the fastest swimmer in the world. There was a kid who, who, who was training and learning everything. One of the main things about uh, a soldier before he goes into battle, he has to train intentionally to learn the ways and mannerisms of his enemy. He has to know intently who his enemy is, um, what are his enemy's weakest points, and how likely is he um, able to um, 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 counter attack his enemy and defeat his enemy. He has to learn the strategy of defeating his enemy. That is the mind of of a soldier, and we all, when we become born again, when we um, um, accept Jesus into our lives, we we don't just become mere believers. We become soldiers in a battlefield. But most of our war, or if not all of our warfare, is spiritual. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. For those of you who think that your battle is with your other brother or your sister, Oh, you, you wrong enemy. My wife said wrong enemy. Those of you who think that your battle is with the next man or the white man or the black man, wrong enemy, wrong enemy. And, and I know that this might be very controversial, especially in this time that we're experiencing right now, but wrong enemy. Um, the Bible said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And this is directly going towards believers. Some believers, their behavior in this time, especially, it's very surprising and appalling. 
You know, it's appalling to the point that it, 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 it causes my, my stomach to ache because I'm like, do we not know? Have we not had enough teaching? Adult, especially the leaders. One of the things that irked me, uh, 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 Minister Kara, is, is that some leaders um, um, fail to um, advance with a spiritual mindset, we fail to deal with issues with a spiritual mindset. And I'm not blaming them. The situation sometimes, um, um, it, it requires for you to deal with it head on. But one of the, the warnings that I have for you are probably a suggestion that Jesus deliberately came or he was born in a time where the Roman Empire was over Israel and they were oppressing the people of Israel. I'll give you another um, um, situation. When God spoke to Abraham in Genesis and told Abraham, I will give you a land that I promised to give you and you will inherit that land. Um, look up to the sky. Can't you, can you count the stars? That is how your generations will be, your inheritance will be. But, God said, but, nevertheless, on Sunday I shared that. When you see a nevertheless, get yourself ready. When you see a conjunction, get yourself ready. Because he said, nevertheless, your people, care will be oppressed. And they will be in bondage for 400 years. Abraham could, could immediately said, he could have immediately said, okay, Lord, you can have that promise. Um, yeah, let's go, to, let's go, let's, let's move on to the next promise. You can have that promise. I really, I really don't want to be associated with this, you know, because, you know, later on when people are reading about, you know, Abraham and they started blaming me like, Abraham, you had a friendship with God. He could have chosen to revoke that promise and say, God, you know what? Are there any other promises in that, in that book you're reading from? Can I get promise number three? Um, any promise that doesn't have 400 years of bondage, I, 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 I want to get it. But no, the Bible said Abraham believed God. And as a result of his belief in God, it was imputed unto him as righteousness. You want to expound on that a little bit, Karen? Um, absolutely. I, I think, and, and it goes back to, I think the key word here is faith because we're speaking on obstacles. So because Abraham believed, because he believed, it was counted unto him righteousness. It put him in right standing with God, you know, his faith. And, our, our, and, and, and just thinking about that story and what God has promised Abraham, and though Abraham did inherit, you know, uh, the promises of the Lord, but it was really for his children's children's children. And so that's why um, it was generational. The promise was generational. And I believe that's the mindset where God is trying to uh, get us as believers is that the the blessings, overcoming obstacles is, is generational. It's for our generation and generations to come. It's a legacy. And that is important because it takes us out of selfishness and puts us in selflessness. And so how I respond now could affect my future. And, and the decisions that I make right now can affect my son's future and generations to come. And so, yes, the pressure is on us mm -hmm. as individuals right now or for the unborn mm -hmm. or uh, the next decade from now. And so our faith is important, how we frame our world and, and how um, we and, and because of you know, the death of Jesus and, and the blood of the Lord, he, he, he has put us in right standing. So I'm in right standing with the Father, right? And and the, the promises of the Lord are yea and amen, but it's going to come with some persecution. And so we, 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 we're dealing with a generation that, um, you know, when they come to God, it's more of what, what can I get from him? 
you know, and then you're dealing with another part of generation that see, you know, maybe the power of God. And I'm thinking about uh, Simon the sorcerer. Well, how much that costs? How can I get that anointing? You know, how do you look so, you know, so powerful like that? And, you know, uh, uh, mesmerize the crowd and, and those different things. And God is just like, listen, no, I'm, I'm looking for you to frame your world. You know, through my through the word of the Lord, it's not so much about us coming to the Lord or having this born again experience on what we can get from him, but dismissing the obstacles that come with it. So I'm good as long as I'm being blessed. I'm good as long as you're recognizing who I am. I'm good as long as I'm getting, you know, doors are opening for me. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with God, but don't let an obstacle come. Now I'm like, well, where are you? I, I was there. I'm the same God that is, that is, you know, was with you when that open door came, when I opened that door for you for your promotion. And so it is important for us to frame our world. And, and I believe that encounter with God and, and with Abraham, it, it's just powerful to where um, what stands out to me, again, is just it, it was generational. Because he said, look up. Now, Abraham knew that he wasn't going to have all those, you know, those children right there. And then he, he said, and it was probably overwhelming, like, what? But, um, yeah, Abraham, yeah, this is for you. But with persecution. It's going to come with persecution. And so, um, and, and I, think, I think that's important for us to know now, that as believers, we're, we're going to have persecution. But fear not. and Be of good courage. He has overcome the world. Are we moving to the next yeah. quick question? Or? We're going to talk about um, Caleb's situation, the, the spies. Um, so we're going to move on to the spies and how they overcome um, their obstacles. Um, how Moses overcame the obstacles when the spies came to him with the evil report. And after that, we're going to mention a few obstacles that we face daily. And we're going to talk about how we can defeat these obstacles and, and have victory in our life. In Numbers 13, 25 to 33, it reads, And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days, and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, um, and brought back word unto them, unto all the congregation, and shewed them the fruits of the land. And they told them, or they told him, and said, We came unto the land um, where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey. Good report. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, Remember I spoke about being aware of the nevertheless. Get yourself ready. Nevertheless, the people are strong and they dwell in the land. And the cities are well fortified. The walls are great and very great. And moreover, we saw the children or the descendants of Anak, um, which were giants. There were Amalekites dwelling in the land of the south and Hittites and Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. And one of the, the, the verses that really stood out to me was verses 30. When one person stood up and he was, he was about 80 years old. He stood up. He was an older man. He stood up. He was a leader of one of the tribes. He stood up. Caleb stood up. And the Bible said he stilled the people or he quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Stop right there. So that <laughs> the 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 spies and the people were like, Caleb, didn't you just hear what we said? There were giants in the land, obstacle number one. There were um, several people groups, um, like the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Canaanites. Those were people groups that occupied different parts of, of the land, like the south, the north, the mountains, and um, just as a note, if you um, probably have read this story, um, Caleb was the one 
who took over that mountain, and that mountain was occupied by um, the Amorites and the Canaanites. And, and the people were like, Caleb, did you not hear what we said? But Caleb, in his mind, he was not paying attention to the obstacle per se. He was, or his confidence rather, was in the promise that our, our Heavenly Father will give us that land. And he said, this is the land that I've given you. Go and take it. This is the job that I've given you. Go and take it. But first, you have to present yourself. There is an interview there. If, if you get the job, if you, you are um, I'm blessed enough to get the job, you get the job. There are challenges of the responsibilities and, and different things to maintain the job, um, pursue, per, uh, um, pursuing promotions and whatnot. There are challenges to upgrade yourself and become valuable. Here Caleb is saying, let us go up at once and possess the land for we are well able to overcome it. And Kara, he, the, the spy said they were giants and, and Caleb is saying that we are well able. So what Caleb is, is stating is that the capacity that we have within us is stronger than the capacity the giants have within them. The Bible said, greater is he that is in us or that lives within us than he that is in the world. Paul went further and says that if the same spirit that dwell, that um, raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. Listen, what you have on the inside of you is greater than any obstacle that presents itself in your life. They will present themselves. There will be challenges. There will be delayed things, promises, blessings. You will have to face things head on. But guess what? In the words of Caleb, you are well able to overcome it. You are well able to defeat it. And some of the obstacles that present themselves on a regular basis, the number one obstacle, I might add, is fear. The number one obstacle in the life of an individual is fear. And fear, as we know it, can manifest itself in many different forms and fashion. It could manifest itself in the fear of failure, fear of change, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. And, and you know, people sometimes... Um, um, when they face a challenge, um, Minister Kara, they do risk assessment. And I, I'm a business student. I, I, I studied principle of business in school. And, and um, I studied project management also um, in college. And so I know what risk assessment is. And that is one of the major things that you have to, major topics in um, project management that you have to deal with. It, it's, very, it's very extensive. You know, we spend a lot of time dealing with what risk assessments are and how to, you know, um, 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 overcome them or deal with them. But, you know, one of the things that a lot of people do when they face situations and encounter fear, they do risk assessment. Should I? Should I not? What if? And one of the things that Jesus just disliked is the what ifs. There were several times Jesus rebuked people. Have I not been with you that long? Even when Jesus was on the boat and the storm came and the disciples woke him up and shook him, the Bible said, Master, Master, Rabbi, do you not care that we're perishing? Who ever said that they were perishing? Do you not care that we're perishing? And Jesus immediately stood up and he calmed the storm. And they marvel and they're like, oh my God, who is this guy? They were sitting in the boat or, or uh, um, in the traveling in the boat with um, the king of kings, and, and yet they did not know him. Even when he performed miracles before that, they still had their doubts, and they still had their what if. 
but I don't really know. Um, can he really? He says it. He says in his word, they who trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame or shall never be disappointed. But, re- I, I, you know, let me do some risk assessment. Should I? Should I not? You know, this obstacle look really major. You know, like the, the children of Israel when they had to face um, the Philistines. And, you know, they were okay with um, fighting or defeating men uh, um, they size. Men they hide. But when it came to the giant, for some reason, people are very afraid of giants. And, and, you know, God is saying that, listen, I made the giant. And I have the power to give you the power to defeat the giant. So what's your talk about? You know, they, and here comes, you know, God have a way of deliberately making fun of us. Or probably not making fun. Some of you might be offended by that. I'm sorry. Not making fun of us. God have a way of deliberately using the lesser things, um, Pastor Steve. The lesser things in life. He says he used the weaker things. Uh, of this earth to confirm the wise, the foolish things. And he, God said to Samuel, go find one in Jesse's house. And Samuel, being the man that he is, is like, okay, if this guy is going to be a soldier, obviously he have to be the biggest, buffest looking, junkiest guy, you know, like um, um, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, the rock. He has to look like the rock. Yeah, if I go to Jesse's house, I better see Dwayne Johnson in Jesse's house. <laughs> but God said, Samuel, listen, don't anoint anybody you see in this house. And Samuel was like, Jesse, do you have any more children? He says, oh yeah, one. I forgot. He's in the field with the sheep. He was a shepherd. And this lad, we're, we're, we're you know, um, um. Saying that the the scripture and and, and several theologians are led to believe that he was a teenager and he was probably around the age of 15, between 15 and 17 or 15 and 19. So maybe we're, let's lean on that David was a 16 year old. And he said, anoint this kid. And then this kid went to face the giant. And he said to that giant, that Wait a minute, this is the guy that you guys are afraid of? Do you know this guy don't have a promise like we do? Do you know this guy is not filled with the spirit like we are? Do you know that this guy is not a chosen people, a chosen generation like we are? Do you know that this guy is uncircumcised, Philistine, he's not in covenant with Jehovah, with Elohim? This is the guy? I mean, he's tall and everything. He's bulky. He's a giant. He pr- he's probably twice the height of everybody here. But guess what? The bigger I've learned in construction, the taller the building is, the easier it is for it to come crumbling down. All you have to do is destroy its foundation. And f- it doesn't matter how much steel, how much reinforcement, Because the taller the building goes into the sky, the weaker the building is as you stretch it out. Because when the wind blows, the wind blows the building back and forth. So the foundation becomes rocky over a period of time. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And what David did that really spoke to me throughout my Christian life was David took what he had in his possession, Apostle Josh, what he had in his possession. He took what he knew. You know, this is how I defeated bears and lions in the wilderness. I I had a sling with a bunch of rocks. That's the only weapon of choice I had. You know, so... um, let me just use my sling, so let's see what happened. God says he's going to be with me, so, you know, let's see what happened. And he took that sling, and he sent it forth. And do you know that that giant who gave Israel so much trouble throughout 
the period of, 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 of Saul being king came crumbling down in one instant. And immediately, instantly there, David destroyed the key enemy of Israel. And David was celebrated for his act of valor. And in that same breath, I want to encourage every one of you that you are well able to defeat any enemy. It's no enemy is too big, no enemy is too great for you to defeat. No enemy whatsoever. Jesus said in John 16.33 that in this life, you will have tribulation. But notice, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And what he's saying is that if I have overcome the world and I am in you, you are well able to overcome the world. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to just turn it over to Kara. To, um, you want to share something? I'm going to turn it over to my wife and then Minister Kara and then we'll conclude on that note. You were mentioned. Uh, you were mentioning some of um, the obstacles, right, so, um, to for our purpose, actually, to ach achieve our purpose. And I was thinking of negativity is also one of the um, main uh, obstacles to achieve our uh, to reach oh, our purpose. purpose. And actually, we read in the Bible, and we read, you know, bef before. Um, the, the people of Israel, they possessed their land. It was, you know, so many years they went through negativity after negativity, murmuring. And, you know, I'm trying to see the application here, you know. So, um, you, uh, Minister Kara, you were talking about framing, you know, basically like creating an atmosphere, you know, that can um, host this promise, these purposes. So many times this is what happened, you know, like it, it could become like a second nature, you know, that we have that tendency as a human beings, I'm just talking as in general, to be so negative. And sometimes, you know, we could even see from the, from the answer or from the solution, we could see it as a problem as well, you know. So um, just the, the practical um, principles, uh, how important it is to know the Word of God, to speak the Word of God, Amen. to apply the Word of God. The, the book of Romans chapter 12, Apostle Paul is um, commanding, right, the, the believers to, um, he says, do not conform to this word, but, but, be, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And so it's so important that um, we create an atmosphere, you know, that is, um, that can host that presence of God. Because we all have dreams, we all have plans, projects, but many times, um, what are we speaking to these projects? What are we speaking over these dreams? Are we speaking that just the way we feel, the way we see things happening around us? You know, it's important that we speak life. You know, it's important that we speak um, the word of God in our lives. Actually, that uh, just in my personal life, something that a few years ago God revealed to, to myself is that it's very important that even in my home that I speak the word of God. You know, that, not, um, that I, I cannot create an atmosphere that is so toxic and is so negative, you know, that first the presence of God cannot, cannot be there because, you know, we just so negative all the time and murmuring and, and uh, grumbling and seeing everything that is wrong. So we have to reject negativity. And I believe that this became one of the major problems, uh, you know, that the people of Israel faced. They were negative all the time. Oh, oh yes, we, we, we wish we were in Egypt eating this, and, and we wish this, and we wish there. But, you know, they were not grateful, grateful for what God was doing in that moment. They were not grateful for God's provision, and they were not seeing ahead because it was so difficult. So they were just seeing what was happening, you know. So And, and that, could, that could be us many times. We see what is happening, and we lose perspective. 
You know, we stop like framing our, our lives, our, our, our purpose, you know, with that word of God. And, and this is an encouragement for all of you, you know, that you, let's reject negativity. You know, if this is you or this is uh, people around you, reject negativity. You know, because when we are just accepting this negativity, um, it becomes a, a, um, like a stronghold. You know, it, it kind of um, blinds us to see the, the goodness of God. It blinds us to, to uh, have an expectation on God's power, you know, have an expectation on, on what God is able to do. And um, talking about uh, Caleb and Joshua, they were not, you know, they were not <laughs> um, saying that they were not giants. Yeah. You were, they were not uh, uh, denying the facts. They said they, they knew, you know, that these 12 spies, they saw the same thing. They went in as a whole group. They went on to spy the, the land of Canaan. So they all saw the same thing. And, and they were not denying the facts. You know, but so interesting that when the, the, the rest of them, the 10 spies, they were just speaking negatively. You know, only what they, the way they felt, how they saw things. But Joshua and Caleb, you know, by the Spirit of God, they were able to see the promise. They were able to see, you know, the, the generations after them. They were walking on this land like, well, <laughs> oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to build my house here. It's going to look great, you know, and, and my children and my grand, grandchildren, they're going to possess this land. You know, they were walking they're like whoa you know and and uh in the book of of uh, joshua we can read later when caleb came to joshua and he said give me my mountain i know those sons of anak i know those giants they live there but i'm going to take my children i'm going to defeat them i'm going to uh, get them out of that land because that that is my inheritance and i i just love that you know that that um confession that he made give me my mountain <laughs> you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna take it i'm going to possess it it belongs to me and it's interesting that as we read uh it, like i said in the book of, of uh, joshua only joshua and caleb they um they defeated their enemies and they actually destroy them and push them away they basically and uh how you say that they kill them they destroy them yeah. when the other yes when the other tribes they just push them to the borders and years later they still have to face them you know year after year having these 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 battles but only joshua and caleb they didn't have to face these these problems because they said no this land belongs to us and we're not going to you know, fix it a little bit and then deal with this, you know, so I like that. Give me my mountain, you know, so uh, what we speak to ourselves, what we, what we think in our minds, what we declare in, in our daily lives, it has power, you know, our words have power, so um, reject negativity, that's the point I want to Amen. establish. Amen. Amen. Wow. Um, <laughs> both of you. Goodness gracious. Yes, I love it. I love it. Full <laughs> little word God. of the Lord. Um, I, I, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, the scripture speaks, faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of the Lord. Amen. So the scripture, it speaks. Amen. God speaks. Mm -hmm. He speaks through his word. And that's how he, you know, ministers to us. And so with Caleb and Joshua, and I wrote uh, just three things down here. Um, they were able to respond because of one, their experience. Amen. They experienced the miracles of God during the wilderness season. Wow, that's good. The supernatural <laughs> miracles of God. Even though the Amen. children of Israel, all of them experienced it, but some of them memorialized their experience. They, they made a memory of their experience. And I believe that sometimes in life, um, when we go through our obstacles af after we framed our world and, and through the word of God, and when God gives us the victory over a specific obstacle, we just quickly move on instead of um, stopping and, 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 and memorializing that place. Just, and, and I'm thinking about when, uh, you, you know, in the Old Testament, when Jacob, when, when he had the encounter with God, 
okay the angels and he wrestled yeah. and and did the experience and the encounter and what did the, what did God tell him? He said, "Build a memorial right there at that place, yeah. not just for you, but for others." Yeah. Right, write this specific name here. Mark this place that this is where I met you, so you can remember. Amen. And so sometimes we That's when good. we go through um, experiences in life, we go through it so quickly that not not so much that you want to remember the hurt of the experience, but it's more of the victory that came through yeah. that you've over came that particular obstacle and so um so it was caleb's and joshua's experience one that spoke on their behalf two what did they what did they hear when they went to you know the land to spy out what what did they hear i believe and this is just me i believe that they heard what the promises of God was, like you said, yeah. because Moses, God has promised us, you know, land flowing with milk and honey. God has promised us land. And I'm sure through those years in the wilderness, that's all Moses probably instilled because they all they knew is yeah. that we need to get to this land. <laughs> yeah. We need to get here. God supernaturally provided in the wilderness. But OK, I need to rest. I need to get to this place where he promised. Yeah. And so when he got when they got to this particular place and they're spying it out, like you said, they probably approached it with excitement one they remembered their experience i mean if this god split the red sea and uh and he you know caused manna to fall from heaven and wow. water is coming out the rock surely he can give us this yeah. so so they came back so it was their it, it, their experience and, and what they heard and when they came back with the report they prophesied to the future wow. they said we we can we're going to get this this land belongs to us. Amen. Why? Because God has promised that. They were driven by purpose. Wow. They were driven by purpose. Wow. The others went, like you said, it wasn't that everybody saw the giants. I probably would have been a little afraid too. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest. I would probably like, okay, you know what? I'll just take my little corner over here. <laughs> but uh, but they, they, but the others came back and their response, of course, they end up uh, uh, initiating and activating fear, you know, throughout the camp. But you spoke about David and with David, mm. the same thing, parallel stories. Yeah. David, he, 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 he's facing a giant. He didn't understand why Israel was, you know, paralyzed and they yeah. couldn't move forward. Why was that? Because David knew that they had we had the ability to be able to conquer. That land belongs to us. David understood that because he had a promise. So David came with a promise, with an experience, because he gave his resume. Listen, I killed bears and lions <laughs> and yeah. I experienced God supernaturally Amen. taking care of the sheep. And the last thing was David prophesied. He spoke and said, no, this day you will fall. And not only will you will fall, you're going to die. I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to, you know, decapitate yeah. your head. Yeah. And so he spoke that into existence. Wow. And so those key things are important in our personal lives. Amen. Specifically, um, hearing what God is saying. What is he saying? We have to know what God is saying so that we can overcome our obstacles. And when we do receive the victory, let's just take a second and simmer in the goodness yeah. of God. Yeah. So when we're faced with the next obstacle, then we'll know we're coming to the next obstacle with our experience. Amen. You know, the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and enter his courts with praise. We have a responsibility that whenever we face an issue, try our best. It's not going to be easy because I've been through some things. If I give you testimonies of things, for those of you who probably tuned in on Sunday or were present um, at our driving service, I gave a testimony of an, a situation that I went through. If I give you testimonies, and I'm sure Minister Kira have testimonies that you know she could give you that some of you probably couldn't, wouldn't be able to bear. You know, but one thing that I've learned is that when a situation arises, you have to find a way to defeat that situation or that situation is going to defeat you. You can't allow, as a child of God, you cannot allow that situation to get the best of you, to take your mind away, 
to destroy your capacity to the point that you can't move or you to, you you under total subjection to this problem. Uh, if you realize that this problem is too huge and it's overcoming you, you find help. That's what you do. You find help. You know, I am my brother's keeper. You find help. You call somebody. I don't care what time it is. You call somebody. That's why we got to have good friends. And we got to learn as, as, as people of God to develop good friendships. In order to have good friends, you got to be a good friend. Because some of you, some people can't tolerate you. And I'm being blunt and honest with you. Some people can't tolerate you because of who you are, your behavior, your attitude, your mannerism. You're very negative when you come around people. You have nothing good to say. You have no, no perspectives. You have, you have no good integrity. You're, you're a jokester. You like joking around and people can't take you serious. In order to develop good friends, you have to learn to be a good friend. So in, in time of troubles, and when you can't overcome a situation, you could call somebody and say, listen, Sister Kara, um, I'm having a hard time. It doesn't matter. See, things happen to everybody. From the very top to the very least. I, I don't care if you're apostle this or pastor this or evangelist this or, or teacher this or, or, or you, you're the president. Things happen to everybody. That's why the president have a team of advisors and counselors. Because he's not all-knowing. He doesn't know everything. There are some obstacles that present itself that he have no clue. And he have to find his advisors and ask them, what do you think about this situation? How do you think we should approach this situation? This is called wisdom. And just like us, God, the Bible said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give freely and abrade if not. We have a responsibility to, to find help in time of need. Paul said, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Come boldly, not fearfully. Come boldly, not in timidity. Come boldly because th there is a song that says that you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's God is a good God. God is a good God. The Bible said God is good and his mercies endureth forever. If you believe for one second that God will not be merciful to you, then Satan has lied to you. The Bible said he's good and his mercies has no end. And, and one other thing I want to share with you. that It is not God's judgment that leads men to repentance. It, it, is, it is his goodness. He's a good, good father and he loves his children. So, you know, it, it may be the obstacle of fear. It may be the obstacle of oppression, depression. It may be the, the obstacle of, of, of personal agendas. It may be the obstacle of, of, of being lackadaisical, lazy, slothful. The Bible said God has no pleasure in those who are slothful. God does not like lazy people. You know, um, 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 it, it, it could be um, um, complacency. All of these things, in order for you to move forward to achieve your goal or to achieve your purpose, you have to surrender these things to God. You're human. You're not invincible. You can't face it by yourself. If you surrender to God, then God will take care of every situation. Thank every one of you for joining us today. Um, in closing, I would really like to thank Minister Kara for joining us today. I wish we had, um, this topic could go on so long. We could discuss for forever. And, and you know, when church people come together, that's what we do. We talk, we talk, we talk. And we discuss, we enjoy the company of each other, and it, it, it could result in lengthy conversations. <laughs> but 
but we had a wonderful time. Um, it is our first table talk with Minister Kiera, and I, I promise you, you will be seeing more in the future. Um, this great relationship that we're developing with her, we're like-minded people. Um, I thank every one of you for tuning in again. God bless each and every one of you this evening. Um, hope you have a wonderful evening, and remember that you are well able to defeat every obstacle. Know that you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus have already overcome the world. God bless you. Good night.